Hello students, after covering the pharmacology of heparin uh, that is unfraction heparin and uh, low molecular weight heparin, uh, let us study uh, the main differences between the two. Uh, now as we all know heparin and uh, low molecular weight heparin they are uh, very commonly used parenteral anticoagulant and uh, they have a very fast onset of action and they are indicated in the initiation of therapy as an anticoagulant uh, primarily in the treatment and uh, prophylaxis of venous thromboembolism that is a deep vein thrombosis uh, then uh, treatment and prophylaxis of pulmonary embolism and they are also uh, very useful in the management of uh, arteriothrombotic syndrome and other problems. Uh, so let us uh, discuss uh, the differences uh, between heparin and uh, low molecular weight heparin one by one. Now first talking about the category, uh, both unfraction heparin and low molecular weight heparin are parenteral anticoagulants. Uh, then coming to the source, uh, both of them are obtained from a biological source. Now unfraction heparin is derived from porcine intestine or from bovine lung while low molecular weight heparin is obtained uh, uh, from the chemical or enzymatic depolymerization of uh, unfraction heparin. Now well known examples of uh, low molecular weight heparin are the enoxaparin, uh, daltiparin, nadroparin, uh, tenzaparin. Then coming to the average molecular mass, average molecular mass of uh, unfraction heparin is 15 kilodalton while that of low molecular weight heparin is 4 to 5 kilodalton. Then average molecular weight Average molecular weight of uh, unfraction heparin is uh, 15,000 uh, grams per kilogram whereas that of uh, low molecular weight heparin is uh, uh, 4,500 uh, gram per kilogram. Uh, now when we talk about the uh, basic structure, heparin is not a single molecule, it is a mixture of long polysaccharide chains. Uh, whereas low molecular weight heparin is a mixture of uh, short polysaccharide chains. Uh, because it is derived from unfraction heparin. Now talking about the mechanism of action. Heparin inhibits several clotting factors of intrinsic pathway and common pathways. Uh, that is uh, clotting factor 12A, 11A, 9A, 10A, 2A and 13A. But it primarily inhibits clotting factor 10A and clotting factor 2A that is thrombin. On the other hand, low molecular weight heparin inhibits uh, clotting factor 10A, primarily clotting factor 10A. Uh, it also inhibits clotting factor 2, uh, but inhibition of uh, clotting factor 10A is uh, much more uh, compared to the clotting factor 2A. So it primarily inhibits the clotting factor 10A. Now let's study mechanism of action of unfraction heparin and low molecular heparin in detail. Now unfraction heparin inhibits primarily uh, clotting factor 10A as well as thrombin whereas low molecular weight heparin primarily inhibits clotting factor 10A. Low molecular weight heparin is unable to inhibit uh, thrombin that is a clotting factor 2A. Now heparin or unfraction heparin as we all know is not a single molecule it is a mixture of long polysaccharide chain. Now this diagram uh, shows here a single long polysaccharide chain of heparin. It consists of active pentasaccharide sequence shown here in the green color uh, that is the pentasaccharide sequence uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that is the 5 sugars shown here in the green color and long glucose aminoglycan shown here in the blue color. Now pentasaccharide sequence binds to antithrombin 3 induces conformational change in antithrombin 3. Antithrombin 3 uh, gets uh, activated and its ability to inactivate thrombin uh, that is uh, clotting factor 2A and 10A increases. Now this antithrombin 3 is a plasma protein. It inactivates several clot clotting factor. Now this unfraction heparin and antithrombin uh, 3 complex binds to clotting factor 10A and inactivates clotting factor 10A. Now inhibition of clotting factor 10A requires it to bind to activated antithrombin 3. However, the mechanism by which uh, thrombin uh, that is the clotting factor 2A is inhibited is different. Now here uh, heparin antithrombin complex binds to thrombin as shown here in the diagram. There is formation of ternary complex that is uh, for the inactivation of thrombin it is essential 
that the thrombin comes in contact with an activated antithrombin 3 and also with the heparin, also with the glucose aminoglycan of heparin. So for the, this formation of ternary complex is essential. So only if a molecule, only if an uh, anticoagulant has a long uh, polysaccharide chain uh, so that it can form a ternary complex, then only that uh, anticoagulant can inhibit the clotting factor uh, 2A that is a thrombin. Now low molecular weight heparin, it inhibits primarily uh, clotting factor 10A. Uh, low molecular weight heparin is unable to inhibit thrombin. Uh, since low molecular weight heparin uh, molecules uh, possess short polysaccharides chain. Uh, they are too small. They are unable to form a ternary complex uh, with thrombin. And therefore, low molecular weight heparin primarily inhibits clotting factor 10A, whereas unfraction heparin inhibits clotting factor 10A as well as thrombin. Now, next parameter of differentiation is the route of administration. Unfraction heparin can be administered intravenously as well as subcutaneously, whereas low molecular weight heparin can be administered only subcutaneously. Lab monitoring. Now, since the pharmacokinetic profile of unfraction heparin is very less predictable and there are wide variation in the anticoagulant response to heparin, lab monitoring is essential and it is very essential to determine the activated partial thromboplastin uh, time for the patient on uh, unfraction heparin therapy. However, this test is not mandatory uh, for the patient on low molecular weight heparin. Bioavailability. Uh, now, unfraction heparin binds not only to plasma proteins, but also to uh, other cells like macrophages, endothelial cells, uh, resulting in the low bioavailability of 30%. Whereas uh, low molecular weight heparin, they exhibits high uh, bioavailability of around 90%. Half-life of unfraction heparin is uh, 1 hour, uh, while uh, for the low molecular weight heparin it is, it is longer and it is about 4 hours. Pharmacokinetic profile, uh, as uh, we have already discussed, uh, unfraction heparin binds not only to plasma proteins but also to other cells and therefore uh, the pharmacokinetic profile of unfraction heparin is less predictable, while it is more predictable for low molecular weight heparin. Same as for the anticoagulant effect, it is less predictable for unfraction heparin and it is a more predictable for low molecular weight heparin. Use in re renal failure, unfraction heparin can be administered whereas uh, low molecular weight heparin, it is uh, contraindicated if the glomerular filtration rate uh, is less than 30 ml per minute. Now talking about self-administration. Now, due to wide variation in the anticoagulant response of uh, unfraction heparin and the necessity uh, to determine the activated partial thromboplastin time um, and apart from this, dose is also required to be adjusted. Uh, so, the patient on unfraction heparin uh, needs to be hospitalized and therefore, the self-administration of uh, uh, drug is not recommended. However, on, uh, in patients on low molecular weight therapy because of the higher uh, predictable response uh, because of the lower incidences of side effects, low molecular weight heparin can be safely self-administered and it is uh, administered uh, in the outpatients also. Uh, then the risk of bleeding. Risk of bleeding is since unfraction heparin, it uh, inhibits clotting factor 10A as well as 2A. Uh, it is more potent. Uh, compared to the low molecular weight heparin and therefore uh, the risk of bleeding is high in unfraction heparin uh, compared to the low molecular weight heparin. Now talking about the risk of osteoporosis in long term use, the risk is higher uh, in patients on heparin whereas uh, the risk of osteoporosis is low in patients uh, on low molecular weight heparin. Incidence of uh, uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia is also high in patients on heparin whereas uh, uh, the incidence of uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia is uh, less than 1% in patients on low molecular weight heparin. Talking about the antidote that is a protamine sulfate, protamine sulfate is highly effective antidote uh, in patients on heparin. The anticoagulant effect of heparin is uh, can be reversed uh, with protamine sulfate. Whereas uh, the anticoagulant effect of low molecular weight heparin is only partially reversed uh, 
uh, with protamine sulfate. Now talking about the cost of therapy, the cost of therapy is low with unfractioned heparin. But uh, unfractioned heparin is not overall cost effective uh, because of the requirement of uh, uh, activated partial thromboplastin time test then higher risk of bleeding, higher incidences of uh, heparin induced thrombocytopenia, uh, then variable anticoagulant uh, responses and longer hospital stays. Uh, whereas low molecular weight heparin even though it has a higher cost but overall uh, the therapy with low molecular weight heparin is uh, cost effective because of the improved clinical response, overall uh, shorter hospital stays and no requirement of uh, activated partial thromboplastin time. So this is how we can compare heparin that is unfractioned heparin with low molecular weight heparin. Now if you find the video helpful kindly like subscribe and share this video you can ask your questions by writing in the comment section and uh, thanks for watching the video.